Hey, what's going on everyone? Isaiah Henry here. Let me get this all set up here. Da da da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, technology is just not playing here. Boom, we're back. Isaiah Henry, First Position Real Estate. Welcome back. Uh, today we uh, have on Kathy. Look at her, she's already in there. So let's get her in there and get rolling. Be in here any minute now. Hey, there she is. What's going on, Kathy? Hey, how's it going, Isaiah? Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, you too. You too. Things are good. Um, I'll have you excuse my lighting. The power's actually out <laughs> at my house right now. So I'm using, you know, God's yeah. light outside, but uh, we'll do what we got to do. All right. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'm not too good worried stuff, about good that. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, quick intro uh, for me, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So it's Isaiah Henry here, First Position Real Estate. I help government employees in Ontario invest in real estate so they can build wealth and retire early. Today we have on Kathy. Uh, so excited to have her on. Um, she started cutting her teeth in uh, Toronto investing there. And she's really blew up across. And I really mean blew up, like across Ontario, across other provinces. She's doing some big stuff. So super excited to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us, Kathy. Yeah, no, thanks, Isaiah. You're so hype. I love it. You're just got like crazy energy. So positive. Got it. You yeah. got to bring it. You got to bring it there. Um, but anyway, I like to keep it short and sweet, keep everyone active. So I got three questions for you. So I'm going to dive in right now. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about the elephant in the room. I don't know if people have been following you, but I definitely have been. Let's talk about that new cottage investment. What made you jump into something like that? What made you kind of go from what you were uh, traditionally doing into that uh, new mm -hmm. cottage investment there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, last year, I was looking to actually invest passively in a JV deal. So um, Riley actually, Riley Oikel, who is the active partner on that deal, actually found me via Instagram, or actually his virtual assistant found me via Instagram, and she DM'd me. Um, and I had in my Instagram personal page at the time, I'm looking to invest passively as a joint venture, as a passive partner. And so at that point in my life, I really wanted more passivity in my investing. Um, and then we just started talking. I started following his Instagram and saw that he was doing all this coaching and real estate coaching with students and thought that was really interesting. And so we have actually, I jumped into the real estate coaching, but we have actually been looking and shopping for cottages for the last year. Oh, and, cottage, oh, and the cottage yeah. market was just insane. So I, I have been ready to passively invest with Riley for the last year on a cottage property. And finally, like we, we, we've been on over a dozen cottages easily in the last year. And yeah. so this one finally worked out, um, obviously with rising interest rates, less competition in the cottage market, more people coming back to work post COVID. We were able to finally get one. Nice. That's awesome yeah. there. Now, yeah, like uh, I know a couple of people have been looking uh, for cottages. Obviously, like I get the strategy at a high level, very lucrative there. Um, what kind of drew, drew you to the cottage investment, whether active or passive? What made you think, hey, you know what? I want to go to cottage rather than something like a, a multifamily or a short term Airbnb somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the the main thing was just that I was my thought process was I can also use this cottage in the off season. Right. Nice. So. I nice. think that that's a, what a lot of people think when they look at nice vacation properties, whether it be a cottage or like a vacation property in Costa Rica or Belize or like any other part of the world is, hey, if I can run it as a, as a short term rental, then I can also use it when I'm vacationing as well. Um, so that was definitely a plus. And in our letter of intent, um, we had it written into the letter of intent that we would each be able to use it for three weeks in the off season. Um, which would be any time after the summer um, and before the spring, just because Sweet. if in the cottage market, summer market is the best, and that's when you're going to get the most revenue and profit, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense there. That makes a lot of sense there. Um, so you guys are live now. Like, uh, are you guys booked up? Like, we we're not. We're not you. live. We're not live yet. Oh, we're so, not live. Yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not live yet. I actually just spent three hours last night fighting with Home Depot, calling customer service, trying to place a couple orders through um, just because yeah. everything's going through my Amex Platinum, yeah. um, which is another concession that Riley had to make for me because I really wanted to get all the Amex points. But um, we're hoping to go live next week. So nice. that's cool. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. And so once it's live, for sure, we'll share the listing and everything as well. 
good stuff there. One more thing about the cottage. What mm -hmm. made this one a special one? Like why cottage A versus cottage B? What are some of the features you loved about this one? Oh, well, this one's just such a unique cottage, right? So we, like I said, have been on over a dozen cottages in the last year. Um, this one isn't lakefront, but it sits on an acre of land in Marmara, which is east of the Quartha Lakes area. And it has a built-in pool and hot tub. Um, and then the strategy that we typically do or that Riley typically does with his cottage Airbnbs is that he'll, you know, eventually we'll put a barrel sauna on the property as well. So it really becomes this kind of like cottage resort that people can enjoy um and then we'll we're waiting till october to do some more renovations right now it's a four bedroom um okay. and so we're going to renovate to make it a five bedroom essentially you want to maximize the number of beds that you can put into a cottage right so then that way you can sleep a family of like 14 but then you can also sleep a couple of two right so you're maximizing the type of renters or short-term renters that are going to potentially be able to utilize the property no, that's awesome. That's that's huge because like obviously kind of it's a little bit different from, mm -hmm. you know, buy and hold traditional residential where, you know, that number of bedrooms doesn't play as big of a factor. But, you know, now if you can get 15 people in there versus five, mm -hmm. that really kind of opens up your rental pool. So that's really cool. I'm excited to see mm -hmm. how that uh, investment kind of works out. And I'll definitely be watching. If you see my name come up on the, the Airbnb <laughs> bookings, hey, you know, I, I had to. I had to. I love um, it. I love well, let it. me flip gears with you here. Mm -hmm. And let's kind of go back to where you started from. So from what I understand, you kind of cut your teeth on Toronto investing, investing in condos there. Mm -hmm. How have you found those investments to perform from like now? Like from when you got them to now, how mm -hmm. have you seen them perform? Yeah, so now I definitely wouldn't recommend investing in the Toronto condo market just because unless you're going for a pure cash play only play like when I started investing in the Toronto condo market it was six, seven years ago and I was buying at about low $500, $500 per square foot. Um, I did check condos.ca today. It looks like downtown Toronto is trading at about $992 a square foot. So okay. it's like almost doubled in the last six years. Right. And so that, but that also means increased land transfer fees. Um, like the last two condos I purchased, I was paying 27 grand each in land transfer fees. Right. So it's just, yeah. it's, it's just so much higher. Um, and the numbers like to even break even now in a Toronto condo, you might be able to do it, but it's, it's, there's just better ways to invest elsewhere because a one bedroom is pretty much like in the high fives to mid six, low sevens. And then a two bedroom you're looking at like high sevens to into the millions right? Yeah, right. That's, that's, so, tough. that's tough. And, and rents are high. Once again, like we're back to less than 1% vacancy in downtown Toronto and rents have definitely come back since COVID has more or less ended. Um, but even then, it's really hard to break even on the condo property once you factor in all the land transfer fees, um, property tax and like those additional expenses that you'd have to pay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense there. So obviously, when you bought it, you didn't buy it at, you know, $900 uh, a square foot, a more reasonable price of 500. Mm -hmm. What was your thought process behind it when you started in the in the condo investing? I needed a place to live. <laughs> uh, that That's really <laughs> it. Like I had, I went to school in Ottawa, my parents, I mean, my parents home right now I'm in my high school bedroom, actually, which is why it looks so funny. Um, and I moved to Toronto after school and I, I needed a place to live and I didn't want to rent. I didn't want to throw money away renting. Um, and then my best friend has lived with me for the last six years. So it was kind of like a mini house hack, nice. you know, where she's been paying me rent for the last six years. Shout out to Teresa. I love you. There you You're go. The Shout out to you. There you yeah. go. That's awesome, <laughs> so no, knowing what you know now, what mm -hmm. would you have done differently? Like, would you have bought that condo? Would you have tried to, you know, go right into investing something else? Or what would you have done different? Oh, that's, that's such a hard thing, right? Because just the amount of knowledge I have now about real estate investing is so different than when yeah. I started investing when I was 22. Um, I, I probably honestly would have just done, I would have, I, I wouldn't have changed it because the lifestyle that I've been able to live, like working downtown um, in the tech industry and also living downtown has been so convenient. Um, nice. And it's, and that lifestyle for me has, you know, it's it's not all I think when I think about life in general, it's just not about making as much money as you can. It's also just the lifestyle that you want to have the quality of life that you want to live. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for the last six years, like I've been living in downtown Toronto, and it just made a lot of sense for me. And it's been really Wait. convenient. And I, and I wouldn't trade that to have house hacked somewhere else in the GTA, where it maybe would have made more sense financially. Yeah, no, that makes uh, that makes a great a lot of sense there. I heard a really good quote uh, 
on Instagram, actually, someone's like, oh, what's the meaning of life? And um, I think it was a comedian. He said, uh, enjoying the passage of time. And that one mm-hmm. was really good for me because I'm like, yeah, you know, you got to make the most financial decision that it gives you the most ROI and yields the highest. Yeah, that's all great. But if you're like really throwing away your quality of life and not really getting to enjoy what you're doing there, that kind of sucks too. So I love how, you know, I wouldn't change it. But, yeah. But the stuff you got to experience downtown yeah. is great. And that downtown life is something special, right? So. Oh, I love it. I think and one of my mentors early on, once I started my career, something, you know, and he's like uber successful um, and, you know, has a lot of money as well at this point in his life. But he said to me, there's just, and it really stuck with me is there's no VIP line in heaven. Right. And so like, I'm not religious. Um, I, I, I personally believe after life after you die like that's it but it's kind of more of that thinking about like if you accumulate all this money in life and you don't get to spend it you don't get to enjoy it and you don't have a quality of life and you don't really live like you can't take that money with you when you die yes that's very true that's very true that's a great outlook i'm gonna have to snap that i want to send that one out that's uh that's a really good insight uh on life there let me flip gears and go to that my last question here. Um, so I know you started working with uh, with a partner, a business partner. Mm-hmm. I won't drop his name. If you want to drop his name, you can give him a little yeah, shout yeah. out there. Uh, you can totally drop his name. I feel like okay, really... Antonio, shout out to him. You know, doing yeah, his thing out there, just doing his thing. Um, so instead of like um, of diving into all the amazing deals you guys have done, like I know I've kind of followed you guys done like a lot of cool stuff out there. What do you look for in a good partner? Because I feel that is as big a part of the business as the actual numbers, the brick and mortar. Like how did you find Antonio? How did you find a good partner? And why do you like him? Yeah, no, for sure. And, and we've gotten that question a lot because uh, I think that we, I'm so lucky to have a business partner where we're so aligned in so many ways. And so the process of us kind of combining was we joined Corey McKinnon's coaching program last year in the summer. We met around the same time and it was, we both really like what we're doing in our career. And that's something that like stuck out for both of us was that we weren't investing in real estate to leave our day jobs. We both are really like happy in what we're doing and want to continue to advance there. Um, And so like, once again, passivity is still really important to me. Like I'm, I haven't ever done like a full burr. I'm slowly burring out some of my units right now um, in Moncton and we'll slowly burr out some of our units out in Alberta as well. Um, But it's not like that urgency of let's do it right now, get our money out uh, so we can leave our, our day jobs. Um, so there was that, that was aligned. And then the other thing too, was just really having aligned values. And I think that like Antonio and I both talk about that so much, but it is so important to be in business with someone who has values that are aligned to yours. And so, um, you know, some of the things, what I think a story I'll share is the day that Antonio told me he knew that he wanted me to be um, his business partner was we were having a conversation you have to remember like we've had so many conversations up until we decided to become partners as well um, and I was talking about how I want to retire my mom and that was like really really important to me to just to be able to mm-hmm. take care of my parents and he was like in that moment he knew that I was the kind of person that he wanted to be business partners with Wow. so it's just those types of like shared values of like you know integrity and conscientiousness and consideration for one another and like shared mutual respect that we had um that's really worked out really well for us and then also in alignment with our careers outside of real estate investing yeah um but also just kind of having the same long-term goals and when we talk about our business like, even from the beginning we never talked about just like what we're going to accomplish this year it was always what are we going to accomplish over the next like decade two decades three decades like we always thought about our business super long term and where we were now and where we wanted to be that's awesome man i i so much uh gold right there like i i feel like so many people when they talk even like me you know i've approached some people and the first thing is like show me your numbers show me your past deals show me this show me this i'm like whoa 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 and I think you hit it so perfectly. Like, let's talk about like, like, are we aligned? What are your values? What are your goals? Like, where do you see this going five, 10 years down the road? And, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little jealous of what you got with Antonio. You guys just seem to be meshing, which not only translates to you guys personally, but the kind of stuff you guys are doing in real estate is really awesome. So I'm glad you were able to, to share that with me. I gotta have to make some notes myself <laughs> when I go 
right? Yeah, uh, I, I guess one last thing I would say too yeah. is like, it's really good. And this is a book that people have been re- recommending, which is Rocket Fuel. I actually haven't read it yet, but it's basically like finding a partner that's different from yourself, right? So like my, and, and that's really important when you're looking for a business partner, you don't want to have like um, two very like sales like people who have expertise in sales, right? Like I'm the sales marketing communication person in our business. Like I work in tech sales um, for my day job. So I have that type of expertise. Antonio is very numbers driven, very analytical, very high level strategy. He worked for RBC Ventures for years. He had analyzed like pretty much at one point, all of the prop. Uh, property technology companies in the GTA over a two-year period, right? So he has expertise in that space. I've seen him work in Excel. He is an absolute Excel wizard. I ah, can do some equals. Like that's the extent <laughs> of my cool. ex- <laughs> Excel abilities, right? And so in that way, we're very complimentary. And even just like in our personalities, like I'm extremely extroverted. Um, I love to network. I love to be out um, talking to people and doing these kinds of things. And, and yeah. he's definitely changed a lot in the last year to become more extroverted. But initially when we met, that was that was not his forte. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that's really good takeaway, kind of almost like yin yang combination, right? Like you don't need two people who are great at this, but if you one's good at this, one's good at this, together you come and you just create that that really, uh, really strong team there. That's awesome. I like that. I like that there. Mm-hmm. Um, Kathy, that's all I have for you. Uh, did you have any questions uh, for me before we wrap things up? No, this is awesome. I honestly, Isaiah, I appreciate how organized you were with all of this. The fact that you just reached out, asked me for a date, asked me exactly what you wanted, and then had all these questions prepared in advance. I think that just shows that you really prepared and knew exactly what you want going into this. Um, and I'd also love to hear about some of your deals as well. Like, I, what are you working on right now? Yeah, for sure. So, um, well, first of all, I'm working on get this power turn back on. That would be ideal. Um, but what I'm doing uh, right now, I'm really scaling out uh, the joint venture side. Uh, you know, knock on wood, we're really close to closing up uh, a joint venture deal this month. is set to fund uh, August first. Hopefully that one's going to be going there. And then we're working the small multifamily. I'm up at Timmins. I'm taking over that market. Uh, you can call me the, the Timmins uh, terrorizer, whatever you want to do up there. The Timmins but yeah, terrorizer. I, love that market. I like I got it. a lot of good things to say about it. I could talk about it forever, but yeah, joint ventures. We're doing small multifamily value add options and uh, I'm excited. I'm having a whole lot of fun learning and kind of growing that way. So, you know, if there's any investors who are looking to change their life through real estate up North, I'll let your boy. That's awesome, Isaiah. I love that. Yeah. I love seeing what you're doing too. It's it's really great. It's, I love seeing people grow in, in the real estate investing space. I think that's something that is really cool because I've seen a lot of growth in myself and also Antonio in the last year as well, but it's also great to see it in other people. Um, and it's also just great to see what we're all going to be able to accomplish together. Yes, yes. And I and I can, uh, I'm the first one to believe that. Like, I remember when I kind of came into the program, I was kind of standoffish. But then I literally, I'm not gonna lie, like, there's a select few people I had on my list. I'm like, I got to talk to them individually. Um, You know, I'm sad it took this long for me to really connect with you that way. But, you know, there's people just doing it. And I was just kind of watching them picking up on the good things that they were doing. So uh, that's awesome there. Uh, you mind if I do a quick closeout before we wrap things up? No, go for it. Sounds good. Again, guys, it's Isaiah Henry here, uh, First Position Real Estate. We had on Kathy today, discussed uh, some stuff about her beginning, her past, and what she got going on right now. So that was awesome. Um, Kathy, where can people find out more about you if they want to get involved or just keep up to date with what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So Kathy Lay Properties, C-A-T-H-Y-L-E-I Properties is my Instagram handle. Um, Facebook is Kathy Shro, S-H-U-O, Lay, L-E-I. And we are in the process of onboarding two VAs uh, next week. So we will hopefully soon have a website and a separate Malbar properties, Instagram. And uh, we already have the separate Facebook page, but a separate Instagram page for Malbar properties, which is Antonio and I's business together. Awesome. Okay, guys. So yeah, if you got to pause that, rewind that, go give her a follow, go give her a like, do whatever you can to support her business. Uh, before we head out here, just want to let you guys know it's uh, First Business in Real Estate. I help government employees in Ontario build wealth through real estate. Kathy, thanks so much for uh, coming on today. I look forward to keeping up with you and staying tuned to what you're doing. But until then, I'll see you next time. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Isaiah. Have a good have day, a good everyone. One. Take care. Bye.